Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday, the 26th of April. I'm reading Morning Prayer for Easter Season from the Common Worship Provision from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website at Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as an app for Apple Android device, and uh, <coughs> online at Remus Daily Prayer. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. Online, you can uh, find us on YouTube and uh, on the Blind Valley Church's Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook. Stays there as video. The audio is on my Dominic Global YouTube channel, or will be, and uh, stays there forever. Zoom codes, Blind Church's website and Facebook page. You may join by Zoom, more interactive, if you prefer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Easter Anthems. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on a fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm this morning is number 33. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. Psalm 33. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre. On the ten-stringed harp sing his praise. Sing for him a new song, play skilfully with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him all who dwell in the world. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the peoples. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure for ever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven, and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them, and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. 
Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Drawing past our first reading to the Song of Moses and Miriam, turning back in our books to a morning prayer during Easter season. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Our first Bible reading, Exodus 35, from 20 to 36, 7. Exodus is the second book of the Hebrew Scriptures after Genesis, so if you're following a Holy Bible, turn to the beginning and after Genesis, you'll find Exodus. In the margin, you'll find large numbers, which are the chapter numbers, or at the top of the paragraph, somewhere or other, there'll be larger numbers, 35, chapter number 35. Book of Exodus, chapter 35, and the small numbers in the text are the verses. We're starting at verse 20, chapter 35, and we're going on to the seventh verse in the following chapter. Exodus 35 from 20. Scroll back to it from the canticle if you're following electronically. Then all the congregation of the Israelites withdrew from the presence of Moses, and they came, everyone whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tent of meeting, and for all its service, and for the sacred vestments. So they came, both men and women, all who were of a willing heart, brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and pendants, all sorts of gold objects, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord, and everyone who possessed blue or purple or crimson yarn or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ram skins or fine leather brought them. Everyone's offering, everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering, and everyone who possessed acacia would have any use in the work brought it. All the skillful women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and crimson yarns and fine linen. <coughs> All the women whose hearts moved them to use their skills spun the goat's hair, and the leaders brought onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and the breastpiece, and spices and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women whose hearts made them willing to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by God to be done brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, in every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Aholiab, son of Asi, Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer, in blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and in fine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. <clears throat> Bezalel and Aholiab, and everyone skillful to whom the Lord has given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezalel and Aholiab, and everyone skillful to whom the Lord had given skill, everyone whose heart was stirred to come to the work, to do the work they received from Moses, all the free will offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. <clears throat> they still kept bringing them free will offerings every morning, so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task being performed, and said to Moses, The people are bringing much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and the word claimed for out of the camp, No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for what they had already brought was more than enough to do all the work. <coughs> story about uh, either the free will generosity of the people or the uh, obedience of the people to present an offering as uh, Moses commands <coughs> to create this ornate and lavish 
tent of meeting in which Moses meets God. Uh, as I was reading, I was reminded that just before uh, God's people left slavery, according to the story, God gave them favour in the eyes of the Egypt, their Egyptian neighbours, who gave them uh, vast quantities of stuff. Uh, and I suppose a lot of this stuff uh, is uh, going to be then offered to the temple. So I love this as a metaphor for... Um, uh, we've got a motto in this group of parishes, church and community, community and church. Uh, and I don't make any distinction between um, church attenders and non-church attenders because they're people um, have as much faith experience outside as in. There are all sorts of ways in which we support and sustain our faith, uh, whether or not we um, attend to any particular Anglican pattern of worship, rhythm or habit. <coughs> and uh, even if people say they are atheist um, we've got two or three people even holding office on our PCCs who would say that was their uh, faith position, um, support and sustain and contribute to the church. And uh, so we've got um, antagonists providing wealth and money via um, people who are um, open and interested and supportive, but not necessarily part of. And then it's being put together and created in buildings and what they stand for, um, the worth given to God by the um, care offered to these uh, emblems or symbols, sacraments of God's presence in the world, their timelessness, their resilience, <clears throat> their peace, their presence, restfulness, their sanctuary, creativity. Um, it's all endorsed and supported by this scripture. So we've got the generosity in terms of giving of stuff to start off with, and then we've got the generosity, the giving of time, skills and talents. Um, we can draw on people, and I do draw on people for our PCCs who, perhaps for math teachers, perhaps for a small business, for people who um, are in communications or marketing, those people who um, perhaps were um, in the legal profession <coughs> and or just have a way about them that enables them to achieve and do just as these people that... Uh, we read of here and their artistic skills are lauded and praised not only are their skills recognized as being theirs but also is recognized as being a gift from god and we could do well uh, to learn from this passage those of us that are engaged in any way at whatever level in the leadership of organizing maintenance and promotion of the use and belief and uh, mission of the church and it's worship. Luke 4 from 14, our second reading, scroll onto it online. Uh, Luke is the third gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So if you're following the Bible with both covenants in it, <clears throat> two thirds of the way through, you'll move from the uh, Hebrew to the Greek scriptures. Of course, it's all in modern English, whatever version you're using. We're using new revised standard version, NRSV, standard for um, most Anglicans, more evangelicals would tend towards the NIV, new international version, for reasons of their own. Um, <clears throat> Luke 4 from 14, so the third gospel, um, within the third gospel we are looking for the fourth chapter, large number in the margin once again, chapter number 4, and within chapter 4, small numbers in the text, we're going from 14 to 30. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and, in a, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Then he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled a scroll and found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do you hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum? And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months. And there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, 
so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. <clears throat> if you are looking for a um, mission statement for yourself, for your church, how's that? The Spirit is on me to bring good news, to proclaim release, recover sight, free the oppressed, to proclaim God's favour, the time of God's favour. That's, um, I was listening to a sermon the other day, how do you um, present the gospel in three or four words or whatever? And uh, it's something like God is love and God is here or something like that. I forget which bit of the scripture it was that was being quoted, but that's another, this is another um, good potted um, account of uh, the Great Commission. And it inspired me when I came across it, uh, set in song, and uh, it has been set in song. And uh, yes, it's a, a lovely little portion of scripture. Do it. Believe it. Um, and Jesus reads it in his hometown, which is another lovely um, circumstance, um, because we are called in the Great Commission to um, sort ourselves out, our own community, move out to the um, area in which we live and then the wider world. And here Jesus um, goes to Nazareth, his home town, where he grew up amongst family and friends. And uh, he's coming out, if you like, as a believer. And although we're told that uh, all spoke well of him and amazed at his words, um, within a couple of lines we're told, um, A, that they... Um, don't believe him, and B, they want to kill him, and they move to wanting to kill him because he says, um, not everyone will understand what I'm on about, and uh, they took offence at that. <clears throat> and uh, it can be a challenge for those of us who are um, asked to teach and to preach to get the challenge right. Some people need to be um, metaphorically backed into a corner and uh, told that they're sinners and they need to repent because they feel that strongly about their relationship with themselves and with God and with society. Others, if you use that sort of language with them, they would run a mile. Um, just like with children or pets, sometimes one has to really bellow at a dog or a horse to get it to do what you want. Other times, just a glance, a nudge, um, a suggestion that a treat is coming out of a pocket is uh, more than enough. And so it is with people. And uh, so it's a difficult balance to get. So uh, let us, uh, well, may God be merciful and enable us to speak in a way that encourages everybody to speak well of us and uh, not choose to um, put an end to the work of God as far as they are able, which is vanity, of course, because Jesus here, as uh, with God's word, passes through the midst of them and goes on its way. So to the responsory back in morning prayer during Easter season. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. <clears throat> Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? <clears throat> the Song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Sacrifice, Saviour, seal, three in one, one in three. On this Friday, we, from our position of Death, exclusion, grief, hurt, injustice, poverty. Recognise the source of life. 
part of that eternal community of the Trinity, the Godhead, isolated, dead, alone, having been condemned by the injustice of creation's self-destructive tendencies. And um, <clears throat> we thank you that because of that extraordinary penetration, extraordinary engagement, that in fact all that is festering has been released and you have applied that salve that uh, heals and restores. And so we welcome and accept that cleansing, that adoption, that provision, wholeness and healing for our world, for our nation, community and ourselves and pray a special blessing for all who need to know and experience that today, that it, that truth will be presented in a way that enables us and them to benefit from it rather than reject it as either being too good to be true or us as being too unworthy. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, prayers from the World Council of Churches. We are thankful for those who pursue peace and reconciliation in the face of all suspicions and animosities. And we pray for a prophetic witness of the churches in relation to new challenges faced by the peoples in those countries. Christian action research education. We thank God for raising up people to pray for schools and uh, people who learn and work, learn in them and work in them as they face difficulties and are in need of wisdom and strength. Please continue to encourage more people to pray for their schools. We thank you for the Pray for Schools organisation that assists with that. Green Christian. Suriname President Chan Santohi confirmed to local media his, this week that he shuttered a pilot programme setting aside 30,000 hectares for 50 Mennonite families, easing some fears that the country was on the verge of destroying large parts of the Amazon rainforest, writes Maxwell Radwin. Mennonite colonies have a history of contributing to widespread deforestation in other parts of Latin America, apparently. Between Belize, Mexico and Bolivia, many conservation groups said there are bigger challenges than the Mennonites, including the development of around 467 hectares of land for agricultural activity. I'm not quite sure what shuttered means. I don't know what that means. That He has allowed this Mennonite community to, whatever it is, it says that it's eased fears of destruction. So... Um, I guess that's a good thing. So we pray for the interaction between um, administrations in nations, the ethnicities and the belief systems of people that live within those communities and uh, those who would advise on uh, the precautionary principle and sensible management of land to um, see if we can extend as far as possible the um, habitability of this little lump of rock hurting through space for humanity beyond the next couple of three decades. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our engagement with um, the way we're collapsing the capacity of the earth to sustain certainly human life and uh, the life of many other species, m many of which have already gone vast ecocide happening and thousands of species um, becoming extinct each year. <clears throat> Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. And in our benefit cycle of prayers on Friday, we pray for our voluntary organisations uh, across the town and we thank you for the extraordinary wealth of voluntary organisations we have, we pray for uh, our own as the churches, run by small groups of local volunteers. We pray that you continue to enable us to recruit from um, our community, we pray especially for a treasurer at uh, Bramfield and at um, a warden at Wissett. Recent um, annual meetings um, secured a full complement. In fact, we've only got two or three of our parishes with two wardens. Uh, and we need more wardens, we need more treasurers, we need more secretaries. Um, stepping up and uh, shadowing so that perhaps as next year comes round they can 
uh, be given that title. Thank you for those who've moved up from being acting to actual. Um, all very positive, so we ask you to continue blessing. And we thank you for our Millennium Green, the MenCap, the Men's Shed, uh, the Health Volunteer Centre, the Community Dada, um, Hellsworth in Bloom, the Friends in the Library, the um, Parent Teacher Association in the schools. Dementia Carers Fund and all others who do what they can and will to maintain and promote those aspects of life in this town that were once funded through taxes and rates to a greater or lesser extent uh, but now down to us to sort out for ourselves. Thank you for our church wardens. Continue the theme of praying with thanksgiving for volunteers. Jane at St Michael Cookley uh, Je um, Jeanette at St Margaret's Heveringham, Emma at St Mary Huntingfield, Lee and Ken at St Mary's Walpole. Please uh, draw in additional wardens in those places uh, and additional people, particularly at uh, Cookley. It'd be good to have another couple of people at Huntingfield, and uh, Walpole is uh, thriving. So we thank you for them. And uh, we've got some names at Cookley uh, as uh, electoral role. Roy, Robert, Katrina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Alan, Dini. And uh, in Huntingfield, David, Jen Lee, Susan, David, Marion, Patrick, Sally Ann, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney and Sue. And uh, we thank you for them. Pray your blessing. And uh, again, reiterate that. Do draw others in to give their time and money to grow the offer of the churches in those places. With a huge admiration, thanksgiving for those who are already there, already doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, shed the wonder of the Shadrach, but of us, behind us, to grant Mohas Alakanish, but he has my head, some of the Hushim Salaka Yanas. Had any education, but of us, but of us, my daughter, but of my daughter, but of us, 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 God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glad to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.